they have this property nine years, not once in the nine years did they ever come down here to visit it. But while they had the property, they built the sawmill, the distillery, and the tavern. Now the tavern was actually a stage stop. The stage used to run right down through here on its way to the Louisville at the Terre Haute. They also hired the Hamer brothers, Hugh and Thomas Hamer, to run the mill for them. In 1832, the Hamers purchased this property and became the first set of brothers to own it consecutively. The Hamers had it the longest out of all the private ownerships. They had it 49 years in their family. They did the most with it financially, and they were the first and only owner operators to ever live on site here in the Spring Hill Village. They occupied the upper and lower houses here. Now, this mill here was the largest grist mill between Bloomington and Louisville. It served Washington and Lawrence counties and would even get people from as far away as Clarksville and New Albany down by Louisville coming up here to get the grain ground. And the reason that they would travel two days to get their grain ground up here when they could go to a smaller mill down there, those two large millstones leaned up against the wall back there. Those are the original millstones. The Bullet Brothers imported those from France. When they built this mill in 1817, they actually ordered those the year before. They were made out of quartzite. Quartzite was the premium millstone material you could get in the 17 and 1800s. And it was only available from France. It was nearly as hard as diamonds. That's why they wanted it. It offered a superior grind, and the large size of those millstones allowed them to do a lot of grinding here in this mill at a much faster pace compared to smaller mills like Quebec's that sat down near Salem, or even Hickson's mill, which sat over here where the uh, Nature and Activity Center is today. If you were a farmer in these areas, you could bring your grain down here, bring it down in the wagon, you back that wagon up right out front, offload it to the second floor. Okay. Once that grain was upstairs, they had a trap door system right in here, and they'd open that up and run a gravity feed wood slide, a wooden chute, and that went from upstairs right into this feed box here. So first thing in the morning, they start feeding the grain down that slide, fill up this box, and it would go out the back through a valve into this wood trough back here. And inside the trough is a wooden auger. It looks just like the one right up there on the beam. That auger sat in that trough and turned, and it would drive the grain, which was predominantly corn, down here where it got picked up by the conveyor belt buckets on the elevator here, which took it up and dumped it into the hopper. Now, their hopper did not have a lid on it like ours does today. It was open. What it did have on it was a canvas arm attachment. And that stuck out right here and would catch that grain and run it down into the hopper. And from the hopper, it went into a feeder tray. And as that millstone is turning, that feeder tray is spring-loaded. And it's just going to keep feeding that corn right down in between the millstones where it gets ground up and comes up right down here. Now, the millstones that we use today are the replacement stones. They were put in place in 1962. Ours are made out of granite. They're not quite as hard as the original quartzite ones back there. These were put in place in 62. The original ones back there ran from 1817 to 1892. That was the commercial run for the mill. When the state came down here in 1928, started the restoration process on the mill and several other buildings in the village, they found those original millstones laying out in the weeds. Cleaned them up, resharpened them, they reinstalled them, and they ran again from 1930 to 1962. Now ours weighed 1,500 pounds a piece. The original ones back there would have outweighed those by about 100 pounds or so. I'm going to go ahead and separate ours. Now the mill operates today just as it did back in 1870. All water power, all wooden gears. The water comes right out of Hammer Cave up out of the side of the hill there, out of the spring. Down the flume, it's going to hit the overshot wheel on the outside here, and that's going to start up the gearing system. There's no electricity involved here at all. All water power, so just watch for it out here.
Ow. Bad once you start talking, but just wait. <laughs> You're out here. 